coming up, find out where Morgantown food vendors could be forced to move. Are you prepared for retirement? Research shows most Americans aren't. How much money will you need? Also straight ahead, students in West Virginia are working to improve test scores. Find out what one school in Montgomery County is doing to promote summer reading. Our award-winning WVU newscast starts now. More restrictions on street vendors. Food trucks in Morgantown are on the move. I'm Mike Martin. And I'm Jessica Gway. How much will you need for retirement? Tips on how to save straight ahead. These stories and more on this week's edition of WVU News. Hot dogs and tacos are popular late night snacks for the downtown Morgantown crowd. But Mike, some food vendors in Morgantown may be forced to move from their current locations on High Street. Austin Gamarini joins us now with more. Thanks, Mike and Jessica. Morgantown City Council recently approved a new ordinance. It means street vendors will have to park somewhere else. The Morgantown Taco Truck is a familiar late night site. It serves an average of 100 people a night. Uh, I felt there needed to be some more flavor for late night food, and so with that I came up with the idea of the taco truck. The taco truck can be found at the top of High Street. Business is doing well, but other food vendors will soon have to adapt to a change. Recently, the city of Morgantown passed an ordinance that will prohibit vendors from selling on downtown sidewalks. It also states that the vendors will have to be set up in a designated parking spot. Each food vendor is allowed to sell food between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. The designated parking spots will be at least 50 feet away from any open business. Morgantown Mayor Jenny Celine says City Council will need to find a safe spot for the vendors to set up. Yeah, safety is a huge issue and part of a concern for safety is concern for the vendors themselves. The new ordinance will go into effect on January 1st. Decongesting Morgantown sidewalks is the purpose of the ordinance. My goal is to keep the streets of Morgantown not only safe but clean. The taco truck will not have to move because it is already 50 feet from an open business. But for now, all food vendors are allowed on Morgantown sidewalks until the new year. Thank you. Vendors will also be required to clean up 50 feet of their parking area after they close or face up to a $500 fine. Mike and Jessica, back to you. Saving money for retirement can be a big challenge in these sluggish economic times. In fact, research shows nearly half of all workers have less than $10,000 saved for retirement. I recently found out how important it is to make sure your savings last as long as you do. Some dream of their golden years being spent traveling or living on a beach. Joe Thomas has been working for 39 years and would like to keep himself busy even after retirement. Actually, I just turned 65 Sunday, uh, but I like to work maybe another couple years or so, depending. My health is still good and I feel like work and I enjoy it. But when the day comes for Thomas to retire, he's prepared. He's already been meeting with financial advisors to help make sure his nest egg is secure. And experts say this is something all workers should be doing as soon as possible. For most of us to accumulate this sizable nest egg, you have to start early. AARP suggests that by the age of 60, you should have nine years worth of your annual income saved. So if you're making $50,000 a year, you should have at least $450,000 in the bank. For one in three seniors in West Virginia, Social Security is their sole source of income. Caruth says it's not enough. Everyone needs to have additional savings if possible. It's important to, to be disciplined and as much as possible, structure your savings so that you cannot touch that money. I think when you finally say you're going to retire and do it, it's going to be a big change and you just something you have to get used to. Financial advisors say to match your employer's 401k contribution. And if you don't have a 401k, consider an IRA. To see if you're prepared for retirement, Visit the website at the bottom of your screen and try the retirement calculator. Thanks, Jessica. Students at one elementary school in Morgantown are working to improve low test scores. Education reporter Mackenzie Bristol joins us with more. Thanks, Mike. The new accountability system frees the state of West Virginia from federal regulations. According to officials, the new rule will prevent schools from being compared to each other and allow other schools to succeed based on their own merits. Test scores
scores are important to a public school and its state. So this elementary school is doing whatever it takes to raise scores this year. We've started some new programs this year and we're working with students one-on-one -on -one to try to improve their scores and in small groups and we do pro activities like this. We have after school math night, um, we have Dr. Seuss night. We do a lot of things outside of school to try to bring them together and bring parents in to try to help the kids improve and want to learn. Summer is a time for fun and games, but with only a quarter of West Virginia schools meeting literacy requirements, Milan Park has come up with a new incentive to keep their kids reading over the summer. Reading scores at Milan Park Elementary were 18% lower than the rest of the state. Incentives like tailgates and extra activities keep the students interested in learning. They try to make it so you can read and it's good to keep on reading and reading, but um, they try to make it better by giving you a reward, reward after you read, making it even better to read. The Mountaineer and WVU student athletes rewarded the students for their summer reading and encouraged them to continue learning. Let's go Mountaineers! Students are back on their regular routine at Milan Park Elementary and teachers have already seen a significant change in the reading scores after summer break. The state calls schools that are failing to meet standards priority schools. They must make improvements within three years. Mike and Jessica, back to you. Thanks, Mackenzie. Now we go to another program in our area that's helping students. An after-school hangout is preparing children for their school days. I visited the group at its new location, and organizers say it's a better environment for the students to learn. The Mountaineer Boys and Girls Club is a nonprofit organization focused on providing recreation and companionship to children. It's a safe place for children to spend an afternoon. The clubs vary with their objectives. Our bread and butter has always been academics, um, whether it's intervention or just assistance or putting things together. So every day after school, our kids come here, they work on homework right away. The program moved from its smaller, more rundown building on Spruce Street before moving to this place the old Woodburn Elementary School. I know for sure that this building is much bigger. It gives, you know, the different grade levels their own space to do their homework. I know at the other place it was just a big room, you know, and everybody had to do their homework in the same room. You know, you can imagine first graders being in the same room as 12th graders doing homework. Rochelle Pugh said the children in the program were ecstatic about the move to a bigger facility. It gave them more space to become better readers and test takers. With that, Came good grades. The Mountaineer Boys and Girls Club have great facilities for students to do homework after school. In fact, 83% of students made honor roll last semester. If you'd like to volunteer for the Mountaineer Boys and Girls Club, you can visit its website at the bottom of your screen. The Boys and Girls Club operates in over 4,000 communities in the U.S. The Morgantown's club has been open since 1999. From helping others to fighting adversity, one WV football player has experienced it all. With 42 total tackles last season, the Mountaineers aren't short on talented players. Coming up, sports anchor Greg Medea will tell us who's gaining attention on the field. Also straight ahead, the late Senator Robert C. Byrd is remembered at WVU. I'm Greg Medea, and straight ahead on WVU Sports, I'll share one player's story to becoming the emotional leader of West Virginia's defense. I'm Zachary King, and straight ahead on WVU News, I'll tell you how Senator Robert Seabird's life was remembered by an author's visit to the university. We're all different. Our interests, our backgrounds can influence our futures. But without focus, they're just dreams. But what if someone could give your interests life? If they could give your background power? If they could fuel what motivates you? That's what gives dreams meaning, purpose. And perhaps that was the moment you knew you wanted to be a mountaineer. Making his way from a junior college in Iowa, nose tackle Shaq Rowell is no stranger to hard work. And with career-high tackling records last year against Syracuse, Rowell is prepared for this football season. Sports anchor Greg Medea joins us now with more in the studio. Thanks, Jessica and Mike. This year's college football season shows an improvement for WVU's defense from a year ago. And it's no surprise that Shaq Rowell is partly responsible. 
I caught up with Ral to talk about adjustments he's making on the field. West Virginia senior nose tackle Shaq Rowell is a disruptive force in the middle of WVU's 3-4 defense. Rowell has 20 tackles early this season, but WVU defensive line coach Eric Slaughter says Rowell's role goes deeper than the stat sheet. I mean, he's great. He's a very emotional leader, too, so he you know, gets everybody excited. And then when things are going tough, you know, he has a, a calming effect as well. So, you know, the guy's been here a long time now and played a lot of football for us. And kids look up to him, respect him as well as I, I do. And, and he does a great job of leading us. Rowell was selected as a game captain by his coaches in two of WVU's first four games. His love for playing at WVU stems from a long journey starting at Iowa Western Community College and eventually two more than 10. Appreciate everything I get now. I mean, versus Juco, we had to pay for everything. We didn't get nothing, but everything we get here, we earn it, they give it to us, and I cherish everything. And then uh, just the process of how hard I had to work to get here, I never will forget that. When Raul takes his position on the field and lines up across from the center and over the ball, all other 10 defenders look up to the senior. And a lot of guys know what I've been through, uh, not just Juco, but my mom passed away. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of stuff like that, man. Guys see me fighting through adversity, and they say, if I can do it, I can do it too. And I just try to tell them that, be positive about everything. Everything happened for a reason, and I never questioned that at all. West Virginia will rely on Rouse's leadership and ability to make plays throughout the remainder of the 2013 season. Rowell joined WVU in 2011 and is completing his senior year. Mike and Jessica, back to you. Thanks, Greg. From fighting adversity to creating an everlasting impact, West Virginia is home to many timeless figures. And one of those figures is this late Senator Robert C. Byrd. Government reporter Zachary King spoke to people who are still inspired by Byrd's work. During this time, Robert C. Byrd is known as the father of Constitution Day, and author David Corbin came to WVU to celebrate the life of Senator Byrd on that special occasion. Corbin worked on Byrd's staff for 16 years. Corbin's book, The Last Great Senator, debuted a year ago. I'm hoping to create more of a national impact, give Byrd more respect and admiration throughout the country, because I make the point he's a legend in the U.S. Senate and an icon in West Virginia. More than 30 buildings in West Virginia are named after Senator Robert C. Byrd. Most of the money Byrd brought into the state was through federal funding. W Student Government, this is Ryan. WVU Student Government Association President Ryan Campion worked as an intern in the governor's office at the time of Byrd's death. He saw firsthand the impact Byrd had across the state, including here at WVU. Legend has it that Senator Byrd kind of got his muse or his inspiration for Constitution Day after he gave an address here at WVU. So in a one way, Senator Byrd might be the father of Constitution Day, but it kind of makes WVU the birthplace of Constitution Day. Senator Byrd died three years ago, but his legacy lives on through people like David Corbin and Ryan Campion. Zachary King, WVU News, Morgantown. Robert C. Byrd still holds the record for longest serving senator in U.S. history at 51 years. Incredible story. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of WVU News. Be sure to visit us online at our website. You can also watch any of our shows on YouTube, and don't forget to follow us and our reporters on Twitter. I'm Mike Martin. And I'm Jessica Gway. Thanks for watching WVU News. Today we leave you with the sights and sounds of WVU's expanding Evansdale campus. We'll see you next time.